Happy Tuesday! I tried to segue in from the uh, intro to this, and this is why I don't do tech stuff. I don't think I did such a great job at it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. You are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And I want to do a big shout out and huge thank you to Steve, DJ Simply Nice. He did a little, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm liking this. Like last week, he did a little like pregame because he was on my show last week and now he did it again today. I'm kind of liking it a little bit too much. So I'm, I'm, you know, I might have to like try to keep him on this, you know? Um, so we were, we're super excited because tonight is a very special night. I have uh, Miss Lisa Lisa is going to be calling in. I apologize for all of you that are watching Facebook Live and expect to see her beautiful face. You're stuck with me tonight. Um, you know, she was not able to uh, make it over. So she's still going to be with us live, but we're going to be doing it via a phone. So I apologize. Just, you know, keep her in your head and we'll post some pictures or whatever the case. But um, I do apologize that she is not going to be here with me in the studio. But in order for me to bring you guys great guests, sometimes, you know, they can't be in the studio because not everybody lives in New York, so it's not always so easy to get you great guests beside me, which, of course, I always prefer, and I miss Lisa so much. I really would love to have had her here next to me, um, but I'm grateful to have her on the show anyway. So you are tuned in to Real Talk with Karen Stacy on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And I just want to say thank you guys so much. I know you guys shared the post and, you know, you've been part of the feed. Steve was going for an hour with some banging music and everybody was chiming in, sharing is caring. So please feel free to tag anybody that you might want to listen. Uh, I have a lot of people that say to me, how do you listen to the show? So there's the TuneIn app. And you would search, and it's a free app, you can download it free, you would search Miami Mike Radio, and then you just hit play, and you can favorite it, and then that's all the live shows. My shows are then recorded and put onto my podcast, which is then available on the TuneIn app as well. So after you search Miami Mike Radio, you can search Real Talk with Karen Stacy. You hit the, the heart button so that I'm your favorite because, you know, you want me to be your favorite. And um, you can hear it any time. So if for any reason you can't listen through the show today and you want to catch the whole thing, I will be uploading it probably tomorrow so that you guys can listen to it. And all the shows that I ever do, you can upload and listen to. So, um, you know, that might make it easier for you because I know sometimes, you know, you miss things and, you know, it's, it's a long time. Sometimes we don't have two hours to just sit down and listen. But if you have the TuneIn app, you can throw in like one earpiece and listen while your kids are driving you crazy and you're cleaning up the dinner table or whatever it is that you do at night. Okay, so I am hoping that Miss Lisa is now available for us to speak with. So the moment we've all been waiting for, let's see, hold on, let me see, let's see, let's see, oh, hold on, I hear a laugh, I hear a laugh, <laughs> oh, there you go, uh-oh, can you hear me, uh, can you hear me now, testing, testing, I can hear you, I can hear you perfectly, mama. Oh, good. I can hear you perfectly. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my love? I'm alive, girl. I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, right. Which, uh, unfortunately, we only know we know only too well is certainly a gift, right? Yes, I tell you. Yeah, no doubt. Well, we had a big buildup before the show. Uh, we had DJ Simply Nice on, and he played like a bunch of your songs and a whole freestyle uh, thing. Yeah. So, and he played "Let the Beat Hit 'Em," which you know, not a lot of DJs play that. Really, 
I don't understand why they wouldn't. Uh, me neither. I, I mean, I, I, I agree. And it's not just, you know, I'm not being biased. I really don't know why they wouldn't because I, I mean, maybe I love that album so much more because I was around when you made it. But... I remember. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> but I really do, um, like, I love that song. I was getting ready and he played it and I was like... I was like, oh, here we go. I haven't heard this in a long time. I was excited to hear it. Oh, nice. Well, thank you. No, um, please, thank you. I, I just want, I mean, nobody, I don't think anybody listening right now lives under a rock. But what I do every time, and you never know, right? What I do for every show, I always say, who are you? So... Uh. I know. And it's so funny because somebody wrote that down. They're like, I think I need to study because if I'm ever on Karen Stacey's show and he, she asks me who I am, I need to know how to respond. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Um, uh, I don't know. Who am I? I am Karen Stacey. Um, I'm Karen Stacey. I'm a mom, first and foremost. That is the same thing I say. I am a mom, first and foremost. I love my baby. I and my, that. my best accomplishment. I agree. I love my kids. They're at that age, though. You know, I love them, but 90% of the time, I want to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> How old are they? You know oh, man. 13 and 15. Yeah, that's kill you the ages. Yeah. And you have, yeah, you have boys, boys, girls? You have two boys. I have two boys. Okay. Two boys. But first and foremost, I'm a mom. Okay. And then I am a... Well, I'm a working mom because I... I live for the stage, so I will never stop doing that. I want to be the Puerto Rican Lena Horn on the stage. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm a recording artist. That's what I do. That's what I'll forever do, along with a bunch of other stuff that I do. I, I'm a musician. See, well, there you go. So, and that is Miss Lisa Lisa. So, for anybody that is under a rock um, and has <laughs> never listened to uh, freestyle music, um, you know, there's no one that, I mean, I really don't think there's anybody that doesn't know your name. I mean, I have to, you know, give props there. I don't really think there's anybody. I mean, look, even my parents know it. <laughs> your parents. Yes. Well, you know, and that goes uh, without saying there, but. Um, you know, Lisa and I go back, you know, oh, Lisa, Lisa, I was thinking about this the other day and like, I, I, I needed to refill the Botox. I was like, holy yeah. shit. So I was, I was either 19 or 20 when you yeah. were with my brother. Yeah, you were 19. 89. Yeah. Okay. So I was 19 and... We, do you remember we celebrated my 21st birthday? Yes, I do. do you, I remember. Ooh. <laughs> uh-huh. And, wh I remember. and where do we go, Lisa? Uh, where did we go? We <laughs> went to Chippendales and we took my mother. Your mother was a trip that night. I think she had more fun than we did. <laughs> I, we went to Chippendales and we took my mother. Yes, she was a ball. I'm telling you, she is a hoot, that one. <laughs> How crazy is that, though? I was just thinking about that. I don't know what hit me, why it, it came to me. And then, I, you know, because I'm going to be 50. I know you just had a birthday. Happy birthday. Your birthday was Thank on you. the 15th. And we were supposed yeah. to celebrate this weekend. But uh, I know. Mother Nature is a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That bitch. So we 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 did miss uh, getting to celebrate together, but we'll make up for that. Um, we will, we will. I promise. Yeah. And so I was thinking about it, and I guess because you were having a birthday, you know, and I'm gonna be fifty in a couple of months. Like it hit me, and I was like, I was talking to Noah about you, and I'm like, holy shit! How's little man? How's my little man? How's he doing? He's doing good, thank you. He now he thinks oh. he, he wants to be a doctor, but he still thinks he should have a to his own talk show. <laughs> you should, you should let him have one. Yeah, well, hey, listen, he can do whatever he wants. He has his own YouTube channel, so you know he there can you go. he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> that's that's all good. But I think it's so cute because you know he's like you know me, mom. Once I start talking, forget it. I'm like, yeah, I don't know where you get that from. <laughs> <laughs> Mama. Yeah. Mama Your way. mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, I mean, it's just, it's amazing because, 
you know, the whole thing about an entertainer is so much of entertainers are really, um, what's the word? I mean, you, it's all about, you know, knowing the right people, being in the right place at the right time. You know, those are all, you hit it, you hit it on the spot. You hit it on the spot. A lot of it is, I don't care what anybody says. No one's born with it overnight, man. Definitely not. Uh, it's about who you know. Yep. And it's hard to get in it. And once you get in it, to stay in it is even harder. Exactly. I mean, now how yeah. old, when you, your first album, you were what, 15? Well, when it was released out here in the States. I started with Full Force when I was 13. 13. You know, I was 13. I recorded the songs and it was uh, put on a, a compilation album and released overseas. Okay. So it, it, and that took a year. So then a year after that was when it was released out here in the States and everybody thought we were a British group, which was hilarious. Really? Everybody, everybody thought we were a British group, yeah. And when they all find, found out that the guys were from Brooklyn and I was from Hell's Kitchen, they were like, oh, damn. <laughs> but it took a long, it took a minute, you know? Yeah. And that's because I was fortunate enough to know somebody that knew somebody that told me about an audition and I went. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, how did you, how, I, this much of the story, I don't know if, I, I mean, a lot of the things we're speaking about, I know somewhat of, but I uh -huh. don't recall, like, so where did you train, like, how did, did you just sing, you know, in the bathroom, or did you, you know, train, yeah. how did that happen? Uh -huh. <laughs> My training was in the bathroom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I started singing when I was about six years old in the church choir with my mom. So okay. that was my training. And then when I turned, I think I was 13, when I got to Julia Richmond, I got in early. Uh -huh. Graduated early. So I got in early. Okay. And um, yeah, I started singing with the, the Towns Unlimited group there. That's about the, that's as far as my training went. Wow. Before that, I used to be with this Puerto Rican acting group called Intar with my oldest sister, Maria. And that's, the, that's about as far as that gets. But vocally, I was never trained. I just loved to sing. And I used to watch my mom because she was a musician herself. That's how I got my training. Which is crazy because that was what I was kind of segueing into is that, you know, I, you would just you know, wake up in the morning and you would be drinking coffee and you would just, you know, hold a tune. And it's yeah. like, you know, at that time, and I'm not, you know, not knocking anybody, you know, in the, well, more like the 90s and, and up, you know, that was when all of those, um, and, and I could be wrong because I'm, I'm not hip on this, but, you know, all the, that synthesized stuff and all of those yeah. um, things, they all made everybody sound good, right? So if, Oh, absolutely, and people are still using it too, unfortunately. Right, so I'm not trying to put anybody down by any means, but, like, your voice is your voice and it's beautiful whether you know you're in the bathroom or um oh, so having coffee no but it's true and that's the Thank thing you, is mommy. that you know the the you know the talent you know is there and and you can't you know, sometimes, look, you either have talent or you don't. You could train. Exactly. I agree. You could do whatever and you could fine tune it because if you have to do a hundred shows a week and your vocal cords and, and your, your, your voice is not trained, you're never going to hit those notes every single show never. because you're going to be weak. But, Very true. Right. But if you can do it and then fine tune it which is what you did um you know it's it's amazing and the fact that th okay so 13 i'm not going to i don't know if you want people to know how old you are but you oh, I don't mind i'm proud of my age i just turned 54 <laughs> okay so and that's what i love about lisa when I was texting her earlier. I'm like, you know what? I didn't like ask you how much time you had tonight. And I don't know <laughs> if there's anything you do or don't want to talk about. And she was like, I got nothing to hide. And I, I got, got nothing to hide, girl. And I got all the time you want. And I was just like, I fucking love this girl because 
You know, so many people hide behind a facade and I'm, I keep it real. I'm real talk. And I, I, I hate that. I hate when people hide behind a facade. I'd rather, if you're a bitch, be a bitch, you know, and, and don't pretend that you're a sweetheart and then you're, you're stabbing people in the back, you know, behind that. So yeah, which sucks, which sucks majorly. And that's 90% of the people in the business. Hello. You know, I hate to say it, but it's the truth and I've experienced it and it hurts. It really does hurt, but that's all right. You get over it. Well, you learn, you learn to just press on. That's all it is. And that is Real Talk, my friends, because you are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And my special guest, who is on the phone, because unfortunately we could not uh, coordinate the whole being in the same place at the same time thing, is Miss yeah. Lisa Lisa, uh, the, free, hey, everybody. <laughs> the freestyle queen. Um, and I don't know a person that is, well, other than myself, of course, but I don't know anyone that is as real as you. I have to say that. Thank you, mommy. I just, you know, listen, I am as me, and I say it with capital letters, me, as me as I'll ever be or anyone else will ever be. I have nothing to hide. I love what I do. I love people. My business is a people person business, so yes, I can't be a bitch. I don't, I don't agree with people that are bitches. Hey, everybody shits things. We all come came from the same hole. Well, not the same hole, but you know the same <laughs> area. <laughs> yeah, but you know what. I I, I'm gonna, but Lisa, I love you so much, and I mean this with the utmost respect, but there is, you are the baddest fucking bitch I know, so don't, you, you, you got a backbone that could knock down a building, so, yeah, right, see, and you're just as humbled by that as, you know, as anything else, and you know what, and that's what I love, is that you do keep it real, you're not gonna turn around and say something to somebody just because you're gonna say it, you you say it because Thank you feel you. it and you mean it. And if you don't, you don't say it. And if you have an adverse opinion on it, you know, you're, if somebody pushes you, you're going to express that. And Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Damn right. I, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. I'm not going to go back on my word. Uh, I don't know how to put it. It's just, just the way shit is. Well, you, As it should be. yeah, well, that's the whole thing. And that's why, like, you know, I mean, I never know, you know, it's hard because let's face it, you know, even though I know you on a, a personal level, you know, yeah. you're still like, you know, a, the, a big shit, you know, you really, you know, you are, you're, you know, everybody was like, you know, coming at Lisa, Lisa, oh my God, Lisa, Lisa's going to be, you know, and everybody was like, you know, so excited and anticipating you coming on the show and, you know, I see people and like when we, I used to go, you know, with, to your shows and all that stuff and, and you see people and, you know, it's just crazy because, you know, I grew up in the arts and, you know, so I'm certainly not starstruck, but, you know, it's amazing to see. And I mean, you, you have like followers, loyal fans that are with you since like the record, okay, so you, you said you were 13 and it was released overseas, but basically yeah. it was released here in what, 1985? Five. Okay. Yes, 85, yes. Right, so since 1985, <laughs> since 1985, yeah. it's now 2020, you still have this humongous fan base I mean that I that's just amazing to me and and what the fuck happened with freestyle it's like booming booming I mean all of a sudden we did this in the 80s you know and all of that was was huge in the 80s and then it you know fizzled a little bit but it was still doing whatever but I would say I mean, my timing is off a little bit, but I would say, what, the past solid 10 years? I mean, yes. right? I mean, and you're on tour always. All the time. It's nonstop. Uh, I think what happened was that all of a sudden people just started getting bored huh. with music that was out. Shitty music. You know, people were looking <laughs> for, you know, 
Uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? I don't know. Anyway, they were looking for something. And there were a couple of promoters that decided that they were going to do these huge shows and put them out there. Like and Sal. Once they started, yeah, yep. Sal Abatello, yep. there's Bobby D, um, so many more. Alan Beck, uh, oh, I could go on. Mm -hmm. They just started putting these shows together and people started swarming to them. Yeah. Well, and it, it just kept going from there. Well, I got to ask you a question. I don't know your situation. You have, you know, your two boys. Are you married, single? What's your situation? I'm divorced and I'm a single mom and I'm with someone right now. Okay. <laughs> well, it took me eight. It took me eight years, but I'm with someone now. Yes. And God bless. So now, there's my question. There's my there's my question for you. I talk a lot on the show. We talk a lot about dating and the climate out there. Um, you know, obviously, you and I are you know about four or five years apart from each other. Um, I and as you know, I, you know, I'm single for the past, you know, five and a half years. And you, mommy. <clears throat> you know, thank you. So, you know, I was amazed at the climate in which we are now in like the dating world and everything else. And I think that in my opinion, one of the reasons why freestyle has kind of rebooted, because like you said, people were looking for something. What people were looking for was their youth, um, because a lot of us are now single, whether we're divorced, widowed, or, you know, for yeah, some people true. that never got married, right? So we're all exactly. in our 40s, 50s, 60s, maybe. And now we want to go out. I don't want to listen to freaking, uh, I don't even know who they are. So I couldn't even say, you know, names like, you know, the, the what, pit bull and all that stuff. I don't want to listen to that stuff. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe if in, I'm in the car and the radio's on or whatever. But when I go out, I don't want to go out and listen to that and be around a bunch of 20 or, you know, 30-year-olds, right? So I think that what the freestyle, you know, explosion has taken place because so many of us are back out again, or maybe even we're still, they're yeah. still married, but their kids are grown, right? So Yeah, and their kids, kids, you know, they're all coming to the shows and, you know, going to the right clubs. Because, like I said, they were missing something. Exactly. Like music just started getting so stale redundant everything started sounding the same and it's still happening today everything's sounding forgive me i'm not trying to disrespect anyone in any way but to, I, I, it's hard to like something because everything sounds generic the same. i miss i miss the times of the real life bands and and originality and you know give me some give me something sick i want some real yeah uh, lyrics Something. Yeah. You know, don't I don't wanna hear about how big your ass is and, and how many of them you had and, <laughs> and who you gonna shoot later. No. So, uh, <laughs> done with that. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, you know? yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that I really do think that, you know, all of us and our you know, like the radio station is, is, you know, basically geared towards, you know, our age group, a lot of freestyle, and, and we've thrown a lot of parties and stuff where we have a lot of freestyle artists that come. And, you know, I, like I said, I don't want to go out anywhere and deal with some 20 or 30 year old telling me that he knows what I want. You can't lick my shoes. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't handle this. What do you mean you know what I want? You know what I mean? So, and I'm sure, I'm sure you encountered it, right? I mean. Oh my God. It, it, well, from beginning to now, I still do encounter it. And it's like, uh-uh, I'm not about that. I'm not about that. I was, you know, it took me forever to, to, to get back, you know, get back in the game. And it wasn't really a game, it's, you know who you know and who you encounter in the business. You right, know? right. And it's really hard because you never know who's genuine, you know? Yeah. You see about this shit, you know? And who I'm with now is my age, 
in the business, you know, and understand, you know, yeah. really understand what it's about. You know, I can't be there all the time. You know, you get phone calls more than seeing me. And, you know, it's just understanding. It's hard. These kids don't know. They don't know. Real talk. And yes, it's very true. I mean, you know, we in, in a perfect world, right? We meet the love of our life. We, right. you know, build, a, we, we buy a house or we, you know, we get a place. We, we go on vacations. We build a life. We have children. Right. And, you know, it, it, there's a natural progression on things. Now we're backwards, right? Because now we have our life. We have all of those things. And now we have to find somebody that fits into those things without, you know, um, feeling out of place or, what you know, like, it, you know, where you can't. You know, like I like you need a man. Like I'm not gonna sit here and 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 stro I'm so sorry. I'm busy. I'm this, no. I'm working. My kid needs me. That's it. There's nothing I could do. And you need somebody that understands that and supports you. And to boot, yes, you're a strong woman. <laughs> so I'm I'm high maintenance. You know. No, you're not. <laughs> There's not a lot that I like. I am high maintenance. I I I, I don't like it. Well, you're not I high maintenance. Not. I don't like hanging out. You know, I'd rather stay home and, and veg out on the sofa. You know, I like to cook. I love to clean. I like taking care of my kids. I'm not into that. Let's go out. Let's do this. I'm not into all that. So they don't get it. They don't get it. But they, that's not high maintenance. That. That's actually the opposite of high maintenance. <laughs> you know, that's a low maintenance. And you are a low maintenance person because I, I happen <laughs> to know you. And I know yeah. that you're the type that, um, you know, if I go, okay, well, let's run to the store. You're like, all right, come on, let's go. And yeah. it's not three hours because oh, you don't know who's going to see you and you got to put on a face of makeup. You got to do your hair. You got to make sure you have the right outfit on. You're not like that. You're like, okay, this is me. Here we go. I'm going. So high maintenance. You're not. Hat and walk out the door. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which I don't know. Speaking of hats, I don't know if you're, if you can see the Facebook live or if you're just on I the can phone. See it. Okay. I can see do you, do you see what I'm wearing? Do you see this? Yes. Does this look, does this ring a bell to you? <laughs> does this ring a bell? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I wore it on purpose. Oh, I wore it on purpose. You did. Yes, absolutely. I still have this thing. So what is it, 30 years old? Probably, yeah. At least. Didn't, oh, oh did, my God. Didn't Fuchsia give us this hat or, or I gave it to you and it I was, stole it? It was Fuchsia, yeah. And I stole yeah. it from you? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're like, shit, I want that. I I'm still, like, okay. <laughs> Fuchsia, Michelle, thank you. I still have it. I took very good care of it. It's only been 30 years, and it's still my very favorite hat ever. But I had to wear awesome. it tonight because I needed to wear that, you know, for you um, so that you could <laughs> you could see it. Uh, yeah, I, I thought about that. Lisa had this, um, she, and I'm sure you still have it, right? So she had a, a chain and she had a bell that the cult jam bought for her. There was a bell and because she was always with music, she used to jingle uh -huh. it all the time. And I used all to, the time. I used to love that sound and you always used to do it. And I told you I wanted one. And you were like, I have no idea where they got it from. And I was like, I was madly in love with that bell. You still have it? Yes, I do. Yeah. I, I yes, always, I do. <laughs> I always remember that bell. That was, I. I, I ha yeah, I have bells everywhere. I collect bells too. Huh. So there's bells all over my house. But my bell on my chain, I still have that. That'll never go away. Yeah. No, that I never forgot that. I I always uh, you know thought about that, and you know, Aww. yeah, it was funny. I was thinking about that too because you know uh, we we so we all we had like a a, a massive sleepover for like how many years? <laughs> <laughs> oh, four, something, five years, something like that. Something like that. I moved out. You were still you were still there. I, I was still there. <laughs> I moved out. But we had like yeah. a massive sleepover. So the reason why I, you know, Lisa and I are, are like family is because she was with my brother for many years and we, yeah. we all lived together. And 
Yeah. So, you know, it was, uh, you know, uh, years. So we, we, we all lived together. We had like a huge sleepover. Um, I, I posted some pictures on Facebook, a little throwback from a Christmas, like, I, I don't even remember when that was. It had to be like 90, I want to say. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Um, you know, and I forgot that I, I, I even had those pictures and something just hit me and I was like, oh my God, I got to go look. And, and I, and I found them. Um, wow. And I was looking at those pictures. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at the hat. <laughs> yeah. There's the hat. <laughs> yeah. I always had a hat. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I know. And, and that's true. You did always have a hat. See, and that's why, and I have to, I got this. And what's funny is one of our DJs, Hamilton Czar, he always wears, um, a hat, like a, um, what's that called? A fedora. And every right. time we went out, I'd steal his hat. It was just like part of like my thing and I'd seal it and it became like my signature. Every time we went someplace, I had his hat on. So I yeah. guess I had a thing for hats too. <laughs> yeah. I love hats. Yeah. I can never get over hats. I still wear them. Well, it, especially when you don't want to do your hair. It really comes in uh, handy. <laughs> yeah, especially when you travel because you ain't got time to do your hair to get on a plane. You just go. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. I mean, how do you keep up with, you know, such a crazy schedule, Lisa? It's in my blood, man. I've been doing it for so long that it's just, you got a routine. I got this routine, you know, down. Um, and I have my people that I travel with, and we all got that routine down. So it's pretty much my lifestyle. I'm home during the week, being mama making sure my kids are well taken care of and get to school and back and homework and dinner and all the crap. And then I opt that out to uh, just a weekend. So usually I'll leave either on a Thursday night or Friday morning. Okay. And I'll be back on a Monday. Okay. After doing a couple of concerts. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's not terrible. Um, you know, all things considered, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You don't miss too much, but you know, every second is too mi too much. But you know, at, at least you love what you do. So um, I do, I do. I sacrifice a lot just to be on that road. You know, my kids were born. Um, my first son was born. My oldest son was born. It was difficult to leave them. But okay. I started taking them on the road with me because I didn't want to leave them home. Okay. And that's something that I always tell people, uh-uh, I don't, I don't want to ever do that again. Okay. I don't want to take my children out of their home and their element and the travel is not easy. Yeah. So that's when I, I decided, you know, okay, full tours like that are not good for me. I can't do it. Gotcha. I can't do it. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's great that you were able to find a happy medium. You know, you tried it and it didn't work for you and, and you were able to find a better solution, um, you know, yeah. which <clears throat> gratefully so. You guys are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. We are also live on uh, my Facebook and um on the phone, my guest is Miss Lisa Lisa, the queen. I keep calling you the queen of freestyle. Uh, everybody was you're calling funny. you a legend. I call you're you're my queen, so I call you queen. <laughs> and we are we are like just sitting here reminiscing a little bit. We're shooting the shit. Um, let's talk about like your albums. Can we do that? Like, are you, are you going to get? Absolutely. Okay. So let's, so we said the first one hit in the States here, like 1985. And what, which album was that one? That was, uh, Lisa Lisa and Cold Champ featuring Full Force. Okay. So what now? So what Full Force was, who was Full Force? I'm confused. Full Force were my producers. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're the guys that, yeah, they're the guys that I met. They're the ones I went to the audition for. Okay. <laughs> I met them in the basement of a house in Brooklyn, Church Avenue. I remember that. Okay. And they were with me for, we were together for a good nine years. We were on Columbia Records with uh, with Coach Jam and Awesome. That was the first album. They okay. did uh, one, two, three, four five albums with me and then I severed ties amicably because we're still great friends and we're, we still do business together and I started doing my solo thing after that 
And that was when you, so, so the cult jam was different than full force. Cause cult jam were like, yeah, Lisa Lisa and cult jam were a group. Right. It was me and the two guys, Mike and Spanador. Full force were the producers. Okay. Well, you know, and it's funny because I, that's what I was, I was segueing in to say was, you know, we lived in a very quiet, you know, residential area and it was yeah. hysterical had, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, obviously 30 years ago, everybody didn't have a, a you know, a camera videoing everything, but you know, we thought my, our neighbors were going to definitely like, you know, throw us out or something like, you know, like call the police <laughs> on us. We had, I remember there were like Porsches lined up in the, in the driveway. We I had know. the, the, the cult jam coming in. Then you had your big, huge freaking uh, security guys and <laughs> my brother with his loud ass mouth at like whatever time in the morning. Oh. Band as well. Yeah, so it was like, well, they weren't at the house as much as uh, at that time. Uh, you know, I don't remember them at the house that much, unless I'm forgetting. Oh, I do. You do you? All right. So then oh, yeah. maybe that was after I, after I moved out then, because that was yeah. probably around that time. But yeah, that I don't remember. And, you know, I would remember a bunch of good looking, long haired men in, in my house. So I definitely wasn't around at that point. I think I had my own. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just hysterical because you'd see all this traffic coming in and out of the house that, you know, uh -huh. If, if it had been now, I think that would be all over Instagram and, and you know, Facebook at this point, right? I know. I'm so, I'm so, yes, absolutely. I'm so glad, too, that, you know, we did all our stupidity before all that came Hello. out. <laughs> Me, <laughs> too. Got any kind of proof. <laughs> no proof. <laughs> exactly. And it's funny. I was saying that. You remember my, my Connie. And, uh, yeah. we, and I was telling the story, I think it was last week because when I had, uh, DJ Simply Nice on, we were talking about like how, you know, the internet and everything, you know, you can get any information you possibly want. And I was saying that we, remember we used to have those disposable cameras that we used to take exactly. pictures with. And yeah. Connie, you know, Connie, so she came in the store with me when I was like, you know, remember I used to wear that belly chain that I stole from my mother? And yes. I, she took, I saw a picture of like skin and a belly chain. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And, you know, of course she took a picture of me when I was going to the bathroom or something. And I'm like, you, <laughs> I can't. So imagine, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, we didn't have any of that because if somebody took a picture, you kind of knew, you know, unless of course your uh -huh. head was down, but now people could just look like they're scrolling on their phone and they're taking a picture. And yep, and they find it. Back then, we could burn all the, you know, all the <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly. All the bad stuff was done on Polaroid. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God, Polaroid. <laughs> Remember that? I know. Oh, wow. It took six <laughs> hours for it, for it to develop. We used to stand there and just stare at it. You said waving it to try to dry it. waving it. And you know that that didn't do anything, right? <laughs> Well, it made the time go by, right? You start okay, waving it. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I don't know. I mean, we all thought it was doing something, but I guess it yeah. really wasn't. All right. So now that was, so that was your, your first album and you said, okay, so your first album had what on it? That was what? All Cried Out? Did you have on that album? Yes. It had Take You Home and All Cried Out. So and Can You Feel the Beat? And Can You Feel the Beat? So now, which were yeah. all, still, all three of those songs are still sick and on the top of every freestyle playlist you will ever listen to. Um, <laughs> and All Cried Out. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's there is that. not one person, especially woman, I don't know about men because I never heard them do it or saw them do it, but I know for all of us and one of the, the girls that, that was part of the dance school, Elena, she said, I remember listening to All Cried Out and that was what everybody listened to when they broke up with their boyfriend and oh it was like that mixtape. And you would just scream it out because it was like all the emotion that was in it. And that song, I think it was like all of us growing up, like that was like a, a huge, like, you know, like we used to sit there and cry to that song. How did, did you, I, how did that song, did you, who wrote that song? 
full force show that poem. Okay. And I remember when we were putting the first album together, and it was crazy because the first two songs that were recorded back to back, and I was 13 years old when I did it, wow. uh, were Take You Home and Can You Feel the Beat. And I remember they were like, okay, I went to the audition, long story short, went to the audition. The following Tuesday, they said, you have to meet me at this studio. I went to the studio, and it was in Manhattan on 47th Street, I think it was, and Broadway unique studios we went there and they said all right here we're gonna go in there we did both songs in one night wow and then they started to solicit you know um all cried out came after huh. when we decided we went on tour we went on a tour afterwards and they said they took us off the tour and they said we have one week to put a, an album together i'm like what how are we going to do that? Because we only had one week off of the tour. So All Cried Out came in. They threw this song at me. They were like, we like this song. Uh, one of the guys in Full Force wrote it. Let's let's go in and listen to it. And I said, okay. And they just started putting it together as we went along. That's a one-take vocal that we did in one night. Oh, my and God. I was, yeah, I was a kid. I, oh, my God. I was a kid. <laughs> so you what didn't even know, about you didn't even know what All Cried Out meant. <laughs> Exactly. Wow. What was Take You Home, and what was Can You Feel Beat, and what was that? Uh-uh. <laughs> I was just singing. <laughs> That's insane. And like I said, that song definitely, I mean, like, I mean, growing, even my mother knew that song, you know, growing up and, and stuff. I mean, even before we met you, you know, she knew, you know, she knew the song. So it, it's just, it's crazy because, you know, like I said, there and anybody that's listening right now on Facebook Live that's on the feed Hit like the like button, hit something, and tell me if All Cried Out was not like the all time, like that was like the mixtape, right? Like when you broke up with your boyfriend and you had the mixtape of all the songs that you, you know, wanted, you, you cried and wanted to kill yourself to, All Cried Out, <laughs> top on the list, top on the list. Did you ever listen to that song when you broke up with the boyfriend? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Were you I all mean, cried out? <laughs> no. <laughs> that is... I was so busy performing it every night, so I was like, no, I'm not going to listen to that. Yeah, see, I'm seeing the hearts coming up now, Lisa. So I think that they're, I mean, if you're watching, I think that they're, they're going up right now. Everybody, I mean, come on. I, I saw it on one of the comments. Every Everybody, that was the song. And, you know, and it's funny because that's, that's not the only slow song you did. But at that point... It was, you know, I wonder if that was like a gamble because, you know, in the freestyle thing, you know, the other two songs were upbeat. They were more club and stuff. And so how did All Cried Out work into that? Well, I have to be very, very honest with you. And this is how it how it all started. When we first came out, we were on a breakdancing album. Oh, that's Our right. music wasn't considered freestyle. Uh, that's what, right. we, what we call freestyle music was the music that they played in the clubs that the, the little kids would come in with their shell top Adidas to break dance to. Okay. That's what that was. And the cardboard so when boxes. I, when I started, I started doing R&B pop. Pop oh. R&B was what I was doing. Okay. That's, that's what uh, Take You Home was released as huh. in the very beginning. Wow. See, you learned something new tonight because I didn't yeah. and I didn't know that either. That's amazing. So that's yeah. where that fell into. So when you were performing yeah. and, and stuff, were you doing, I can't remember when I saw you, were you doing, you would do all cried out, but you only would do like a, like a clip, like a, not a snippet, but I know like one of the last times I saw you perform in Long Island, actually a couple of years ago, you, you did a little bit, you almost did like an acapella of that. And, and then you went into your other songs. Like, how do you, yeah. right? Is that how you're, you're, you incorporated it in? No, actually how I always done it that night. I had to do it that, that way because they didn't give me a lot of time oh. to perform and I, I wanted to get in as much as I could, so I just threw that in. Gotcha. But normally that that song and every other song is put in. I'll do anywhere from, well, if I do a club, they only allot me like 30 minutes to do a show. But all the other shows that I do, more like an hour, hour and 15 minutes of a show. So we put everything in. I do it all. 
Right. But I'm saying in a club, you know, atmosphere, you know, I don't, you know, you don't normally hear, you know, slow songs. So, you know, that's why. Yeah. I think what it is is that when, when they have a performer coming in at a club, they're expecting to hear everything. So it doesn't matter if it's a club. They want to hear that ballad. Well, yeah. I mean, I would assume so because, like I said, it's like every woman's, you know, uh, you know, thing is, is you know, all cried out. So, yeah, I would assume so because if you're going to kill yourself, that is the right song, you know, to play. Oh no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. So, all right. So now that... <laughs> <laughs> that was your your that was the first album. So take me right. to your second album. The second album was ooh. I know I think I'm it testing was you. To the sky. I know. I think it was straight to the sky because that's the one that had head to toe and lost an emotion in it. Okay. And those were the two songs that hit number one straight across the board for thirteen weeks. So we wow. did pretty good with that. Wow. So what is that considered? Like, uh, uh, that's, that's serious pop. But no, but I mean, what was that? Like, is that like, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm really bad. Like, so like, did you, that, that becomes like a platinum record? Like, what does that become? Oh, the first one went platinum. Uh, the second album went triple platinum. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing uh, so now I'm, okay. trying to, I'm not trying to pull rank or anything I'm just you know giving you stats um, listen I'm asking you what, what's up I'm not you didn't you didn't turn around and go and then my next album which was triple platinum you didn't say that <laughs> I said it. I said, holy shit. And you know what? That is something that I, I really admire so much about you is, you know, you are so gracious and humble, um, you know, that no, I mean, I'm, seriously, because that's an accomplishment of, you know, like a, an extreme accomplishment that, you know, people in the business would like one platinum and you're like triple platinum and, and you don't even want to say it when I'm like, well, what does that mean? You're like, oh, well, it's like pop. Whatever. No, no, no. Let's, I want numbers here. What do you mean? Like, where are you at? Triple platinum. <laughs> Second. So your first album when you were like still, you know, like, uh, you know, didn't even have hormones, you already <laughs> were at a platinum record. So by yeah. the time, so now, so take me time wise, when you made that second album, where, how old were you at that point? Oh, well, I think I was 17 when that album Oh, you were old. Was recorded, yeah. You were old then. 17. <laughs> right. But now 17. the the drinking age at that time was 18, right? Yeah, yeah. So you weren't that far off, but you know, you were you were in the you were still in the business there, but okay, so that yeah. was your second album and you yeah. were 17. So what happens after that album? Uh we went on tour for a couple of years and we were overseas for a very long time. Uh we came back after that and um we recorded the third album which was Straight Out of Hell's Kitchen. All right, and what was on Straight Out of Hell's Kitchen? Let the beat hit him. <laughs> okay, that was the one that was Straight Out of Hell's Kitchen. Okay, and now did you who, who, you did that with um that was with the Cult Jam or without? I don't remember. With the Cult Jam, of course, but I added producers right because we were always doing uh, full force. You know, it was our music and full forces music, but I opted to do to, to bring in different producers because I wanted to get a little different flavor, you know? Right. I wanted to, to play a little bit more, you know, and see where we could go with it. And we got CNC Music Factory to come in, because it was in Cole, uh -huh. to come in and, you know, do half of the album and the other half would be done by Full Force. And it turned out really, really because that one went crazy platinum. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Did it go crazy platinum? I never, I, yeah. I was never aware of, um, you know, where that went at that point. I thought that was a, a phenomenal album. Now, let's read, what was, what were the songs on that? Besides, it was Let the Beat Hit Em. Oh, Let the Beat Hit Em. Uh, there was a slow song that I loved. Um, oh, Don't Say Goodbye? Maybe that was it. Uh, and... Oh, I think you're thinking about someone to love me for me. That was on the second album. Yeah. Okay. You're right. I think I am thinking of that one. Yeah. That oh. was on the second album. 
Yeah, I'm don't I'm not good with numbers, so I can't remember which ones which at my age I forget, so Yeah, I I, I mean you're doing good right now, uh, you know, and then this is you know, you're and this just is attributed to how humble you are that you have all of these accolades and you don't even remember them. <laughs> so and, that's not that you don't remember. Really hard, I try really hard not to think about all of that. I just look, again I'm gonna I keep repeating this. I love what I do. So whatever it is I gotta go through to get on that stage, that's just all it is. No doubt. And you guys are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And we are listening to Miss Lisa Lisa. And we are going through, you know, the the, the decades at this point, right? Um, so, yeah, so a timeline. Yeah, a timeline, right? Which, which at, at our age, the timeline starts to get a little fuzzy. <laughs> like, wait, what? Yeah. yeah, what did I do I yesterday? I still remember when it goes further up. <laughs> oh, God, I, I, don't I know that? Yeah, I, I hope so, too. Um, so now, well, don't worry, you have children to remind you of everything you forget. So, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Mom, don't you remember? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, actually, I no, don't. I don't. <laughs> well, I, don't. I told you that yesterday, and I'm like, well, I told you to clean your room, and you didn't, re- <laughs> we don't remember that, so, you know. Oh, my God, that sounds like me. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, these little shits, man, they're so goddamn smart. I don't know what's in the water. <laughs> Oh, I love it though. I love it. Oh, me too. But I still, they're they're crazy. I mean, so now let's, because I'm gonna, I don't want to get off off track. I want to finish your albums before we go to the next uh, track. So now, um, you're at the third album. Now, it right. was there? Did you? I don't even know if did you release any other albums since then or am I? Since then, oh yeah. I know, what does I'm saying? I don't know. I don't, you know. Yeah, I was still on Columbia, and then we did a, a compilation album of all the hits. Okay. For Columbia, before I severed ties with them. And then after that, uh, I went to my solo deal that I had with Red Ant. And um, with Ruben Rodriguez, I did the LL77 album. Okay, yes. And that has skipped to my loop on it, you know, and a couple of other tracks that were, I think LL77 was more critically acclaimed than, than played on the, on the air because it was just, I think I took it way far, if people weren't expecting this, I did a lot of jazz on that album, you know, a lot of R&B, soul, funk. Okay. I took it so far from what everybody was used to that it was it was different for the audiences, which was okay because I mean the fact that Billboard charted it top ten and Rolling Stone gave me a great great article on it. That's all that mattered. I just want wanted people like the musicians, the people in the industry to listen. I wanted them to listen, and they did. That's amazing. Well, you know what? There's no better, like you said, those are accolades. There's nothing better than to be respected in your field, you know, for... Thank you. So, yeah, that's that's definitely amazing. And now you have, I mean, you're on tour and stuff. I see something going on. I see some Snoop Doggy <laughs> Dog thing going on there. What's, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. up with that? Yeah. What's going on with that? I see him sneaking in a little bit somewhere there. What's yeah. up with that? my boy shout out to the snoop man he is my manager okay uh yes i signed with this company uncle snoop's army and it's uh management production and film and we have a lot of things in the work we're doing new music there's independent films that we're working on right now uh, I also have a boot line that I put together, and hopefully the ladies will like it. Because you know me, I'm a boot fanatic. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. So I'm doing that. There's a bunch of things we're doing, and I look so forward to it. He's giving me a crazy opportunity right now to take it to a different level. That is amazing, and good luck with that because it sounds so cool. I mean, just the boots alone, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Well, you also, now that you just said that, didn't you, you appeared on a couple of, like, you did some acting roles, right? What, what? Uh, yeah, I did 
I do a few. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the biggest one that that we can talk about, because uh, I did a lot of spots on a lot of different TV shows. I also did three seasons on a Nickelodeon show, show called Diana, and I played the mom on the show. Okay. Also, I think the biggest thing that I did, besides Diana, because I, oh man, I love that show. Uh, I did the 300th episode of Law and Order. Yes. Okay. And I played a really bad mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad. <laughs> you played a bad a mom? Yeah, I sold my child. Oh what my the hell? God. Yeah, I don't, why don't I remember? I know I remember something, but I can't, uh, like, and how, when was this? That was in 2000, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that was, yeah, I, I, that was, okay, that was in 2000. But did you do any other um, shows, you know, or, or uh, um, film prior to that? Prior to that, I did a lot of independent films. Okay. You know, I had major. I had recollections, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, you've done so many different things. So, you know, I mean, that's just one more thing we can uh, add to the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I well yeah I know it's like I'm sitting here going through the timeline and you're thinking like like you and you're getting like I can see your face is probably all red right now because you're like <laughs> blushing a little bit because you know I'm, I'm, I'm talking about all this stuff yeah you're starting to sweat a little I know yeah, I, I, yeah. I I I hear you well you know but listen you did a lot of amazing things you know in your life and there are people fans that want to learn everything about you so you know we're giving them the the you know all the goods and and uh letting them know uh you know what you what you know all the things that you've done um well, anything anybody wants to know go ahead and ask because i ain't got nothing to hide <laughs> well you know that that sounds like your 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 voicemail recording on your phone if i <laughs> leave it at the tone if i got it it's yours and, exactly that's it <laughs> Right, which most people would never say to another human, and they definitely don't mean it. So, uh, you know, I, again... I do. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, so now, this is... This got to be rigorous for you, though, because, you you know, I know you say you love it, but, um, you know, you've had a couple of... I mean, like, you know, even though your spirit is strong, your body is has been you know, like challenging, yeah. you know, right? So you're home right now because? I am recovering from knee surgery. I had knee replacement. And you just had this, like, it was January, no, not January, no, no December it, 15th. December. December 15th. The I end think. of December, yeah. Yep. And, and so how are you doing? Um, I'm doing good. I was in physical therapy before I got here, you know, to do the show with you, and they gave me the thumbs up that it's all feeling well, everything's good. Good. Because you go back on tour, like, you know, in like five minutes, this right? I go this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I go back this weekend. There's no plan. There ain't no time to waste. I got things to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this is the thing that, you know, I think so many people don't realize, you know, that, that you know, when you are an entertainer, a performer, you know, the show must go on. And, yeah. you know, you're, you, you, you can't walk because your knee hurts, you know, you figure it out, you know, um, which you is gotta. terrible because, you know, you put your body through a lot. And I know you said that you had um, some back issues prior as well, right? Yes, always have. I have. I've always had back problems, but I think it's because I have osteoporosis, osteoarthritis. Jesus, you know, my bones are cracked. You know, <laughs> so I feel listen. You just deal with it. Um, being in, in heels all my life on the stage yep. doesn't help. Yep. You know, so it just aggravates a lot of the pain. But that's all right. I had double hip replacement five years ago, so I could deal with anything. Dude, you're like bionic. You're the bionic woman. <laughs> you're the bionic woman. You got all new parts. You're like you're like back oh, to the thirteen year old now. You got all new parts. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, it's not great, but you know, I mean, you have to kind of try to make light of a situation, right? Because that's you have to. You that's have to. that's not easy, and and you're doing all of this while still working. Yes, I, I am. My management and you know, people that I have contracts with, they were all like, "Well, what's going to happen?" I'm like, "I'm going to take this month and a week off. You guys are going to let me do what I got to do." That's it. That'll be my downtime. Until then, don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's, but now are you like, you know, like, so now you, you had both knees done or one knee done? What, what? They wanted to do both. I opted to do one because I said I need to walk. <laughs> right. I wasn't going to be late. They said that doing both knees would have taken longer to, to recover from. And I, I don't have that kind of time. You know, I, I love what I do, and I have contracts that I have to abide by. Right. So I, I just did the one, and I have to do the next one because it's going to start okay. getting really bad because I have no cartilage left in my knees, you know. Jesus. And, you know, it, the bone starts to splinter, and it hurts. Yeah, I bet. And, and, you know, like I said, you're the bionic woman. I mean, you got all new parts. I mean, at this point, you're going to go another, like, 100 years. I mean, you know. I hope so. That's the plan. That is the plan. The new and improved Lisa Lisa with the bionic woman. That's what you're going to start. <laughs> That's why you have to start, uh, you know, labeling yourself the bionic woman. I got new, I got new parts. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I'm at the airport, I ring. Oh, God. I'm well, always beeping. <laughs> oh. I gotta do the scanner. I have a card that says that I have parts in my body, so I gotta I gotta flash that card, oh and they God. put me through the scanner. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that must be fun. I mean, I have like piercings and I go through the scan of 57 times, so I can't, I can't imagine. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Piercings make you beep. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, yeah, yeah. holy cow, but you know, so you, yeah, that's right, because when we were trying to figure out when we were going to do the thing for my brother, we were coordinating it with your recovery, um, yeah, you know, to, yeah. to make sure that, you know, you would be able to be around and... You know, and yeah, you said you were going, you know, this weekend. So it's crazy. Yeah. And I took advantage of the fact that you were home recuperating and I, and, and you were so gracious to uh, oh, come on the course. show. Oh, you, yes. Oh, I love you. And I appreciate it because love you more. <laughs> I think, well, you know what? A lot of people, like I said, this is a freestyle station. So many freestyle freaks that we have. And, you know, like, you know, you're a legend, you know, to everybody Aww. here. So, yeah, so people, and I, you know, and I would love, not everybody gets to know, you know, this is real talk. It's, we're not sitting here, I, like, you know, I'm not a journalist. I, I don't ask the right questions. I just, you know, it, we, we talk about stuff. So, people. Oh, you do ask the right questions. Oh. Everything you've asked has been honest. Well, thank you. I mean, I just, I, I you know, it's, it's because. I like people to have a little bit of background so that when they're listening to somebody, you know, the whole point is to get to know them, right? So, you know, anybody can talk and, and fluff themselves. Uh, you're doing the opposite, of course. You don't want to talk about all of your accolades. Um, but, you know, it's like you don't ever get to really know somebody because when they're on film, they're still always on film. And, you know, they have a certain persona. And, you know, what what's great with you is that you this Lisa is Lisa. She's she would her and I would be having the same conversation if there was no microphone and we weren't on the yeah. radio. So I really like to stress that because, you know, everybody says, well, I think the audience always thinks that, you know, it's two different people. Yep. You know, you, what you, what you see is what you get. This is me at home as well. Uh, I, I love what I do. Again, I'm repeating myself. I just okay. really, really love to sing. I love to perform. So everything else to me is just, you know, added attraction. Whatever you want to know, I'm here. I'll give it to you. That's it. And, that, and you know, there you go. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, I, I enjoy doing the show and I know I'm a little different than most because I like to give people 
you know, the real deal. And yes, there are certain things, of course, that you're not going to tell the general public, you know, on, on certain personal things. But, you know, for the most part, what you see is what you get. So if you... Yeah. If, if you're at one of Lisa's shows and, you know, she, you get her attention and you're like, oh my God, I heard you on Real Talk when you were with Karen, she'd be like, oh, and she'd hug you because, you know, you, you know, you know, and that's just how you are, you know, you're not. Oh, I'm a hugger. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm re I really am a hugger. <laughs> my sister gets crazy with me. She's like, you're always hugging people. But what's wrong with that? Right. I'm a hugger. <laughs> well, because you are, you have a very, you know, kind soul and you're... Oh, thank you, mommy. You're, well... You as well. Well, thank you. But that's who, you know, that's who you are. You're always trying to spread the positivity, um, you know, out there, but, you know, amongst people. And, you know, not only do you do it with your music, but you do it with your soul. So, you know, people feel that energy, um, you know, from you. So, I mean, that's something that I wanted to ask you about too, though. Like, how do you deal with, you know, cause you're such a straight up person. How do you deal with like fans like you know we got stalkers we got lovers we got haters you know like how how do you balance that where you know you give them you know you're able to give them what they need but they don't take more than what you want to give if that makes sense wow that's that's a hard one um i i give what i can what i feel at the moment is what i give and usually it's all of me, you know, people come backstage sometimes, or I do the meet and greets, or even if I'm walking in the street of Manhattan, or I'm at a grocery store or something, people stop me and they want to talk and they want to take a picture, I'm not going to say no. Right. Those are the fans. Without the fans, I ain't shit. And that is the bottom line. Absolutely. You guys have put me where I am. You make me what I am. And I am so appreciative of that. Myself, I'm a fan of so many different artists. And when I see them, I want to be able to take a picture or talk. You know, know what's up. You know what I mean? Right. So, being in that position, I, I want to give back, you know, to the fan. You know, because I know what, what I want. I want to give them what they want. Right. Right. Well, and you guys are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And on the phone with me is Miss Lisa Lisa, the freestyle queen. And uh, we are going through a little bit of a timeline on her life here. Um, I do recall, um, and, you know, what's funny is that, you know, you've had, like I said, these diehard fans, you know, forever. And I mentioned the person who gave us the hat. Um, she was one of your diehard fans and she like became part of our family. Yeah, yeah. She actually, I met her at one of the shows we did and she just got really close to my brother Raymond, who was my personal bodyguard on the road back in the day. And we knew each other for a very long time because she came to, I mean, she drove, she would go everywhere. I know. You know and I never considered her a stalker or anything like no. that. No. I just thought really a I true diehard a, fan. That's what I said, and she yeah. Was just, yeah. She was the sweetest thing. Yeah. The sweetest thing. So, you know, I, invite, I invited her in. Yeah. She became family. Yeah. Shout out to Future. Michelle uh, uh, Mupo, I think is is the last name. Michelle but Mupo. Mupo. Michelle Mupo. Yeah. So she she I know that she had come on the feed at some point. I think she had said something because uh, she's on my Facebook and stuff too. So I hope she likes the hat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> she will. She'll yeah, love it. I know. I'm, I'm teasing. But yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's it's not always easy, um, you know, to, to do that, though, because, you know, I, I can't even imagine because, you know, you're on such a, a grander scale. You know, I, I have people that, you know, like because I have a talk show, I have people that message me and they're like telling me their problems. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm flattered, but... You know, like, I am not a doctor. I just play one, you know, on the radio. So, like, you know, <laughs> I get nervous. I'm like, I play, one. I play one. You know, these are not the viewpoints of MiamiMikeRadio.com. So, you know, yeah. I I never, you know, like, sometimes I, you know, you, you feel... 
and I'm sure you've, you know, you've dealt with this considering the fact that everybody that broke up with their boyfriend listens to your songs, but no, I mean, you, <laughs> you feel somewhat responsible sometimes, right? Because, you know, they're, oh, yeah. they're oh, yeah. looking at you. Is, yeah, I think what it is is that they, they just feel comfortable right. and open with your character right. that they think you are, you know? Right. When they get to know you, yeah, or if you allow them to get to know you, they'll realize it, but, you know, they just feel comfortable and they love what you do and they're true fans, so they want to know, you got that face, you got that sound that I can say <laughs> anything to, <laughs> right. so they think that they can come to you and get that advice. You know? Right. Exactly. I, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you do your best. Um, you know, unfortunately sometimes, you know, you can't always, uh, you know, do your best with them. Like, I, I don't know, Lisa, if you can see, um, the comments, I, I see somebody wrote something like, why am I not looking at the comments and responding? So like, for instance, it's difficult. We're doing a live show right now. And I, it's very difficult to, you know, for you and I to talk and then for me to read comments and be able to, um, respond to them. So I guess what we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, And, and so, and the problem too, is I don't know if you're like me, but I can't see what my glass is on, what my glass is off. So (laughs) I'm like, I, yeah, I'm the same way. I can't, uh, that's what I was going to say. I don't know if you can read it because I can't see what the hell it says. Um, but you know, it, I do, I just saw somebody said that and I feel bad because, um, let's see, tell, tell her Jay is here from Instagram, one of her fans. Okay. So Lisa. Oh, hi Jay. (laughs) There you go. I'll see you in Staten Island. (laughs) Staten Island. Oh yeah. Do you have, you have a show coming up in Staten Island? Yes, I do. Huh. When? I'm. Assuming it's in June. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you have your, you know, any any shows if you want to shout them out uh, to let people know. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I'm starting. What I'm starting this weekend is the Ladies of the '80s tour. I saw That's that. One of the tours that I'm on. I'm on. I'm on, I'm on about four of them. <laughs> is that <laughs> it? The Ladies of the '80s tour. Yeah. And it's myself, Taylor Dane, and Jody Watley. Wow. Our first show is in Mississippi, but we're hitting, we're going to be hitting. Uh, Westbury, we're doing Atlantic City, we're doing a lot of different, I'm going to post uh, soon, very soon, the whole list of dates that everybody could come and jump on that show. Okay, great, and what I will do is I will try and, you know, share that as well, um, you know, with, yeah, with, with, yeah, of course, because, and, and I don't, you know, where Atlantic City, I mean, I'm going to have to get to some of those, I, I don't know, can you I, have to. I want to be like VIP. <laughs> yeah, come on. When are you not? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would like to go. I mean, I I've been God. Do you? We I've been watching you perform. You know, more than half of my life, right? And uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah. we have uh, well, one of the shows you did um, in um, where was that? The the amusement park, uh, Great Adventure. Right, six flags. Yes. My my father had that. that freaking. My father had a, like a life threatening asthma attack, and yeah. we ended up leaving the show and rushing him to the hospital. Do you remember that? I know. I'm sorry. Crazy. <laughs> no, I mean, thank God he was okay. But you know, it's just like insane, right? I mean, that was then, and then we went. I mean, I went to a number of your shows, but and then my yeah. parents. We went. Well, we do a lot of stuff at Noma. Um, and you performed at Noma, God, my, yeah. a long time ago. Cause my husband was, my husband was alive. Um, oh, yeah. So that was, and, and we ended up leave. my parents stayed and we left because you were, you were going on later than anticipated. And yeah. my parents stayed. And we had to leave. Yeah, they hung out. They hung. I know. <laughs> they hung out. Everybody else had to leave because it's a work night. I know, no, it was, I don't even think it was a Friday or a Saturday, so it really, it wasn't, but I don't know what happened, I think my husband did work that weekend, so we were there, and then we ended up having to leave, but, um, yeah, that was a, a while back, and then I saw you, I finally, I hadn't seen you in many years, and then you were performing in, uh, Long Island, 
And yeah. I was able, and actually, you know, the right, remember Sal Abatello, I used to cut his hair. And yeah. so I had his number because I, I didn't have yours at that point. And I was uh-huh. like, um, I want to, I'm going to see Lisa. Or maybe I did. I don't remember. But I know at some point he put us in touch with each other. Um, yeah. And so we were able to, to correspond with that. But, um, yeah, you came down to the show. We hung out. <laughs> yeah, I know. We did. And so, you know, it, I'm looking forward to doing it again, especially what. Oh, you will. Atlantic you City. Will. So you got Atlantic City coming up. You got, um, you said Westbury. So that's the Westbury Music yeah. Festival fair thing, right? It's in That's in Long yeah. Island, right? That's the one that it's like it's like an arena, like it, it all the, all the seats it's an go arena around and it's it. That, it's that spinning yep. stage. That stage moves and it makes me dizzy, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was there once and I was impressed because they have like a full bar. <laughs> yes, they do. Right, they got a, a bar there to hang out. We we sometimes we do the meet and greet there. So oh, okay, everybody should come and hang. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we well, gotta definitely uh, get your schedule because that place was cool. Um, because I went to Sal did, and I don't, I don't think you did it. The Westchester County Center, uh, and there was like at least ten groups or something like that. And I'm right, not right. the biggest fan of Westchester County Center because I, I don't like the way they set up with the bar and all of that. So uh, I, 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 and that was the Westbury um, Music Festival is is it feels more contained, like you're. You know, you're part of it. It's not like overwhelming, and I just exactly. I like the setup a little bit better because um, you really feel like you're like involved in what's going on, as opposed to uh, you know the county center is huge. You know, which I'm sure right, are, right, right. are like the arenas that you play uh, when you're on tour. Um, right. You know, but this place is great. This place is great. It's fun, and the sound system is pretty all right. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. And that's got to be huge too. Like what happens? I mean, I had Tony Tonasia on my show and he talked about like how, you know, those mishaps that take place, uh, with the, with the music and, you know, oh, yeah. how, like he talked about one time he said, you know, cause back in the day we had the, the cassettes and he said the whole thing just like, you know, remember how they used to unravel or whatever and yeah. it would just come out. Oh, God. And, well, I fortunately, you know, you, you go through a lot of that sometimes, but I fortunately always had like 96% of my time being on the stage was always with a band, and oh. that's what I prefer, you know, but then you start doing these clubs that can't accommodate a full band, right? and you just start doing track gigs, and it's really difficult because their sound systems are not, they're not up to par, and I wish these clubs would get together. Now they're getting better because... A lot of everything is on a USB. Right. You know, which you just throw into a computer and boom, you you know, through the sound system it goes. Right. But they got to really make it artist accessible, I guess that's the word I'm trying you, to say. Yeah, user friendly. Yeah, like accommodating yeah, to know, the artist. Sure. Yeah, because it's difficult. You know, you got to have the right mics, you know, monitors. We need that. Hello, we need monitors. People. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to hear it. Yeah, you got to be able to hear it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, so I would say, but, you know, yeah, he talked about that and he was saying how, you know, sometimes like even some of these places, like he had these haters that, you know, would, you know, like screw up, you know, his sound or whatever and he would like bug out. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. You know. I remember hearing that a couple of people went through that and. I always had somebody that would run my sound for me, so I never really had that kind of a problem. Yeah. Because I'm not going to let nobody fuck with my shit. Yeah, well, you, yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, luckily, and again, you know, you you know, you know, had, you know, everybody had a different, um, you know, uh, uh, base or whatever you want to say, right? A different team. So, you know, sometimes yeah. I guess when you, when you weren't, in a position to have your own sound people and you had to rely on, you know, other people, you know, a lot of people don't realize what it takes, you know, to do any type of a show, 
you know, the, yeah. the background. Everybody. Yeah, it's not, you know, and, and you as an artist, it's not like you just walk in there and, you know, with a cappuccino and you're like, okay, <laughs> you ready? I like, wish. yeah, right? It's not like that, um, right? Or And for um, you, it would be a cafe con leche, but, you know, uh, we, oh my. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because presentation and sound are everything right because if that's bit if that's wrong you sound like shit they don't say oh the sound tech tech fucked up she sounds like shit her show was whack not the club sound system was horrible this no they point the ear they point the ear they point at the artist and the artist takes the blame for everything yeah and 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 it's it sucks because you know, what are you going to do? You know, there's, you know, your hands are tied at that point. And sometimes even if you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's, you would still be in the same situation. So, exactly, yeah. you know, it's very tricky. And, and I, I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it, there's a lot that goes into a show, no matter what show it is, no matter where it is, there's a lot that goes into it. So, you know, just like I was saying, you know, but not the same thing by any stretch of the imagination, but even like, you you know, with this show, when I, I do put it on Facebook Live, because some people prefer right. to watch and, and everything, but I can't always read the comments. Sometimes I do interactive shows where I actually feed off of the comments and I'm asking right. you know, the audience questions. But otherwise, you and I are talking. So if I'm scrolling through these, then everybody's just waiting for me to scroll through. And then the whole point of you and I talking is because we want to know you. So yeah, it's, yeah, you know, it's hard to do both. Not that our fans aren't important and not that we don't want to know what they're saying or asking. It's difficult to do both. So yeah, it's, don't take offense. Please. Yes, I need. It's like I feel like I'm juggling, right? Like I need those. Uh, I'm juggling yes. balls. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Juggling that, balls. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hello and cut. <laughs> But yeah, you know, that's, you know, I was thinking when I said you're going to walk in there with your cappuccino and I said, no, it's going to be cafe con leche. Lisa uh-huh. made the best coffee like it, 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 i she made the best coffee ever we we had that the sock and oh she, you got yeah right the sock, the sock. The yep yeah. and we you used to have the sock and you actually taught me how to make it and then you yeah. we boil and boiling the milk yep and oh, yeah, pour it through every day, yeah, man. That was a real Puerto Rican does it. <laughs> that was the shit. And I and when I had my own apartment, I I think I I got one of those socks. They're hard to find. Yeah, you can't really yeah. find those. But of course now, you know, I I use the Nespresso. But there's nothing. Anybody that never had Spanish co- coffee before, the cafe con leche through the sock. Let me tell you something. You will paint your house. You will, like, <laughs> jog up and down your block. You will clean your house. If anybody calls you, you'll be on the phone with them for six hours, and they'll never be able to talk through it. I mean, that stuff is like crack. Okay? It is crack. That stuff. And I used to make it so strong, too. I know. And I love it. I, I, you know, I miss that. Like, you also said, and, I, you know, I'm going to call you on it. You also I- said... That you were going to teach me how to make pasteles. Oh, easy. Yeah, well, easy. You're, you said that to me, and you're the only person that has ever said that pasteles is easy. Because everybody that I speak to tells me, oh, my God, that's a labor of love. You know, you need the it's whole just family. It's time-consuming. That, yeah, no, it's just time-consuming. You know, to prep and everything, it's time-consuming. But so worth it. All right. It's so worth it because it comes out so good. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I want to. You said we were going to do it. So here's what we'll do. You'll make me the 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 rocket fuel cafe con leche and then <laughs> I'll make enough pasteles that we could freeze and I'll have for like a year and then we'll do it again the year after. So we'll we'll do it like that. And if you make me the coffee with the sock, I could probably run home from where you are because I'll I'll have that energy. <laughs> Right, I'll I'll shove them in my boobs like we always used to do. Right, we shoved everything in our boobs. Easy now. 
shoot, I had everything in my bra. I don't care. No <laughs> doubt. I know, except you can't put your phone in your bra because that's bad for the tatas. But other than that. Yeah, well. Yeah, you're right. You got to take care of the girls. You got to take care of the yeah. girls. Only Lisa, yeah. speaking of boobs, only Lisa, we'd be like out someplace. She would grab my boobs with both of her hands and just, you know, like, and I'm like, Lisa, really? Like, she would just out of nowhere grab them. And yeah, somebody else that got them big like me. Impossible, impossible, impossible. Yes, and you used to do it all the time, too. And I think I probably turned, like, 16 different colors because I was so young at the time. So, like, you know, I think I was probably embarrassed. Like, now I would just be like, all right, go ahead, Lisa, whatever you want to do. But then I was young and I, it was embarrassing. But, you know, yeah, that's okay. It, it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Listen, if you can't have fun amongst your friends, what can you have, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Jesus. Well, all right. So now, the other thing I wanted to ask you, because I recall this little disgusting, smelly thing. Are you an animal person? <laughs> I knew you were going there. Yes, I am an animal person. What was the smelly thing I was just referring to, Miss Lisa? <laughs> My ferret. <laughs> I love animals. That thing skeeved me out so bad. I mean, it was Aww. cute. It was cute. Don't get me wrong. But I, I don't, it was like, that was a lot of work. Like, what was the, what was the deal with that? I mean, you took it out sometimes, right? You would close the door and I would go to the door and it was always out. When I was home, it was always out with me. It's just that when you have a cage for them and they, you know, let loose in the cage and you got to clean it up. Because, <laughs> you know, everybody shit stinks. <laughs> Not mine, Lisa. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Oh my god! Do you know? You hated that thing. I you used, to, you used to scream. Oh, get that thing away from yeah, me! Yeah, I don't know. And I love animals, but that thing—I don't know. I don't know if anybody out there has a ferret. And if you know you do, I apologize. But Aww. I, ew, I just I didn't like that thing. It was just I mean, it felt nice when you pet it because it was really silky and it felt like you know a nice coat would have been made out of it. No, oh my god! <laughs> I'm just kidding. No PETA people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, um, no, I mean, I don't know. It just, to me, I like, you know, you know, I like my pumpkin. Like I, I, I like, you know, things that are, know. you know, supposed to. Now, do you have any pets or? I do. You do? I do. I have two dogs. What kind? I have a chihuahua and I have a boxer. <laughs> wow. You see, that's so fun. You know, I just adopt, how old are they? Um, my boxer, he's so sweet. He's sleeping right next to me right now. Um, he's 13 now. Oh, wow. Okay. And my, my chihuahua, my chihuahua's 11. Oh, wow. Okay. Your chihuahua, they're both, you know, adult dogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've had them forever. Now, my babies. the chihuahua is long hair, short hair? Short hair. Okay. I have a chorky. Um. Oh, cute. Yeah, that I adopted... Well, I was fostering, and of course, you know how that ends. Uh, so yeah. it last March, and um, you know, let me tell you something. I didn't want a Chihuahua because most Chihuahuas I knew when I was younger were nasty, and yeah, true. they were nasty. And so, like when I when she told me like a, a Chorky and it was Chihuahua and whatever. Now, my my one of my dearest friends has a Chihuahua, and that dog was the sweetest dog ever, and so so smart. So I'm like, all right, so I meet this dog. This dog is the biggest love muffin in the world. I mean, she licks your face, you know, 3,000 <laughs> times. She's such a sweetheart. But when my son is playing with her, 
oh my god she's like ah, 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 and, she, I, and I'm like oh is she killing you like I mean she's like 10 pounds at best and she's like nuts I mean does your I mean I know she's a little he or she is a little bit older now but do, do they do like did your dog do that they make that noise you think like they're like eating like uh, an animal alive or something with that thing yeah no she in the beginning she she did but you know she got used to people after that you know it, it just took for her to get comfortable right with the kids and everybody yeah she's she's pretty good right now she's pretty good when people from you know that are not you know people who don't live here come to visit she gets a little nutty oh but then okay. she comes down after about 10 15 minutes okay you know but no no, she doesn't do it to people. Just when she's playing, like with Noah, like if, if he has like a toy and like he's like throwing it around and she'll grab a hold of it and she's like, Argh! and she's like nuts. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, easy, you pit bull. Like, what are you doing? You know, like she gets nuts. So I was just curious, uh, you know, uh, how, how, you know, how they are. So, so now that you well, they all have different demeanors, you know, yeah. Demeanor. That's true. They're all different. Oh, but that's so hard then because then when you go on tour, not only do you not have your 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 little men, but you don't have your your puppies either. Ah, uh, I know. That's hard. It's the worst. It's definitely hard. But when I get home, I look forward to being home. That's true. But but tell it the truth. Comfort. How does it feel to have the bed by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it's the best. <laughs> the best to have that bed. What? <laughs> I get home and I have no room. Yep, exactly right. I know. You know what? And and that's great, but it's also so great when when you have room. I, I mean, I feel terrible. Oh, no doubt. I feel terrible no doubt. to say that. Um, but don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Listen, we all go through it, so don't feel bad. Well, everybody, you're saying what everybody's thinking. Don't worry about it. Well, Lisa, that's what I do. I always say, <laughs> especially on this show, I, let's talk about the pink elephant in the room. Uh, there you go. I, I, you know, yeah, I mean. I even tell, like, you know, I've never had my kid in my bed with me when my, my husband was alive. Like, I would always go into the other room, um, you know, with him into his room, you know, because I was trying not to get him into that sleep pattern. Um, yeah. And then, you know, after Joey, you know, passed, he was, you know, with me. And, you yeah. know, you get used to, you know, th there's always somebody in the bed, you know. Um, and, yeah. you know, I had my pit bull. I had my pumpkin, which you knew, pumpkin, my little Pomeranian. Yeah. And, you know, and then, you know, my husband. So, you know, between the pit and and the and him and ha there was no room to sleep ever. Like, I was always, I wake up, my back hurt, you know, my this hurt, you know. He was, <laughs> my husband was yeah. snoring in my ear, the pit bull snoring, everybody's, you know, whatever. And I went from that to, like, nobody in my bed. Like, it was really weird because my dog ended up going to my, my pit bull is with my in-laws. Pumpkin passed away before Noah was born. So, it's, like, crazy. And, and I was so used to having a full bed and I loved it. And then now, like slowly but surely, I got used to sleeping alone. And I'm sure that there were a lot of people out there that, you know, are divorced now. Um, and, you know, like it, having the bed to yourself is not really such a bad thing. You know? <laughs> it ain't a bad thing because you get to sleep. It's not you know? such a bad thing. <laughs> and then, you know, like like my kid is a tosser and turner. So, like, he'll come in my bed or whatever. And there were some nights that he's, like, okay. And then there were other nights that he tosses and turns. And I'm like, get out of my bed, you know. And <laughs> so I get, you know, I would think that, you know, you're only away, you said, for a few days. So, like, those few days must be very peaceful in terms I mean I'm sure you're exhausted and you're not going to bed until late but it must still be enjoyable to have that bed to yourself oh believe it or not it is wait a minute it definitely is a better question what is it like to be able to go to the bathroom without anybody bothering you <laughs> real oh talk Heaven. Real talk. To be able to use the bathroom and not worry about nothing. It's like having your own bathroom. I have my own bathroom at home, but somebody else is always in there. <laughs> uh, and now, uh, does the dog, do the, do the dogs come in the bathroom when you're in the bathroom? The dogs, the kids, everybody comes in. I'm like, hello? Yeah. 
I have to lock the door now. Right, don't mind me. <laughs> don't mind me. I'm just in the bathroom. Or that's always when, like, I know my son always has to tell me something when I go to the bathroom. Always. It's either when you're in the bathroom they or have on to the say phone. something or when you're on the phone. Yeah, that's it. Those Why are the, do they always wait for the worst moment? That's the only time anybody wants to know you is when you're in the bathroom <laughs> or on the phone. On the phone. And exactly. once you hang up the phone, all of a sudden, they disappeared. Exactly. No one's around. They got nothing to say. <laughs> Ex even my dog does it to me. Even my little Chorky does it. I'm on the phone. Aww. She don't like when I'm on the phone. And she starts me. As a matter of fact, do you remember I was on the phone with you and I was trying to tell you about all of these yeah, things that were going on? And, I, and she was like, I'm like, stop it, stop it. Get the, I, get. I know, that was a fight. Yeah. That was a fight with you. <laughs> she was a little shit ass while I was on the phone with you. And I'm trying to have a serious conversation with you. And, you know, <laughs> she's trying to get my attention. It's crazy. I mean, so I guess yep. tour life must be good for, you know, utilizing the bathroom freely and being able to have a phone call uninterrupted. Yes. And um, being able to get yourself together, getting ready without, you know, all the other things you have to do. You know what I mean? Right. And, and you know, so... So you mentioned uh, in terms of like balancing, you know, your 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 life um, that you just kind of go you you do your touring on the weekends. Um, yeah. So I mean, so basically during the week, you're I mean, are you going to rehearse? Like, are you rehearsing? Are you you know? Do, are, I rehearse. I work out. You know, I run all my errands. Yeah, everything, everything. I play. A sort of a normal life. <laughs> okay. It's not like I'm on a stage during the week. It's, you know, I just get everything together, play mommy most of the time uh, during the week. And on weekends, then, you know, I fly out and I take care of the stage. And now, how are your boys with that? You know, like, I mean, obviously, they're probably used to it at this point. But, like, do they make oh, you... Absolutely. They don't make you feel... Do they make you... They don't make you feel bad that you're leaving or anything, not at do all. they? Not at all. Not at all. They understand... From get go, since they they were born, they already knew. You know, it's it's a routine. Mommy has to go to work. She comes back a couple of days later, and that's how it is. They they're used to it. Yeah, well, I would assume so, but you know, you never know because you know kids will break your heart like that. You know, like oh, oh you know, you know, like and and then you feel terrible. Uh, you know, and they're just, you know, being honest, but you're like, you know. Yeah, I know. It, it, I was, I'm fortunate enough not to have have to you know, go through that. My kids have never put me through that. Well, that's a, that's a good thing because, you know, sometimes, you know, you go to do something, you feel terrible, you know, like, I don't, you know, I'm not looking yeah. to leave you, but you know, so yeah, yeah. I'm, so it's a good thing though, that you're able to balance both of those things because, you know, that's not really easy to do. No, it's not, but it's a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was a choice I made. Yeah, from get go, it was a choice I made. So you just you make it work. Make yeah, it work. Absolutely. So now let's. I mean, I know a lot of people tonight learned a lot about you because we talked about a lot of different things. But can you tell us something that most people don't know about you? Oh, I know it's a tough one. Uh, it's almost as know. it's almost as bad as who are you? <laughs> I don't know what to. Uh, uh, I love doing laundry. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Isn't that crazy? No, really, I do. It's therapy for me. A lot of people feel my, that way. My sister thinks I'm crazy. Yeah. But I do all the laundry, and I don't let anybody go into my laundry room because I'll kill them. I'll touch my laundry room. And uh, folding clothes and separating and doing all that, to me, it's therapy. Yeah, so, a lot of people feel that way. Yeah, a lot of people feel that way. Well, you know, I think another thing that a lot of people don't know about you is that you are also a, a very um, religious and spiritual person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. You very, guess? very spiritual. Yeah, so I don't think, you know, and you were very close, you know, with your mom and your family. Um, you know, I know that that, that means, you know, Oh, means the world to you. 
Yeah, we still are very close. My mom passed away yeah, almost sorry. nine years ago now, so yeah, it was pretty difficult. But my mom was a medium, and huh? yeah, so she told me a lot. She told me a lot. Well, I think that's probably why, um, you know, you, you're able to give so much to people because you have, um, you know, a, a, a pure soul, I guess would be, I don't even know what the right word is, right? But you're able... I have a sixth sense is what it is. I sense a lot. So. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there yeah. you go. And and it's luckily everybody's still in one piece. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, not scare anybody. No, no. <laughs> Listen, it's all good. And and anybody, like I said, if, if you know Lisa, Lisa is who she is. Straight up, you, you know, this is her. So she has shared with us. I mean, we went through the timeline of everything. Uh, basically, I think we we got we did all the albums, right? Yeah, we did. We did all the albums. So, uh, are we looking forward to any? new albums coming out yes we are we are in the middle of you know getting the right material together and and meeting new and and hungry producers uh that are willing to work with me because i also write and produce so they gotta be willing to work with me um it's coming along really, really well, so look forward to it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so wait, are are you gonna do? A, a, are you gonna do something with Snoop Dogg? You're gonna like? You're gonna sing, and oh, he's hell gonna yeah. and he's gonna rap. <laughs> what? <laughs> of course, that's my man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You gotta. That that's it. You know. You you. I can see that collaboration happening. No, it'll happen. Trust me. That's a He's pretty such a sweetheart. That's a pretty cool thing though. It's really exciting that you're you're you know, I, I saw you have that tour life thing going on, uh, you know, and I think that has yeah. that's the whole thing with Snoop, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. So yeah, like you said, you're you're doing stuff with like four different groups of people at this point. Yeah, I have uh so many different tours that I'm on, so there's a lot of shit happening. Well, we will definitely, as soon as you have your schedule, we'll, uh, I will definitely share it um, so that if any of them, and you're saying that some of them will be here. I know we have listeners all over the world, of course, but, um, you know, we'll post because you, you go everywhere. Where has your, where's your favorite place that you've gone to? Besides New York. <laughs> Besides New York. And Cali, I love Cali, but... I think my most favorite place that I went to was Spain. Oh. Because I have family out there, you know. My mother was born out there and taken to Puerto Rico and raised there. You know, my father's Puerto Rican, but uh, I have family out there. And it was great to see the culture. And I know where my mom got it. <laughs> different way of living, right? Oh, absolutely. It's just a different way, a different culture, yeah. So different. And so now family you, oriented. You performed there? Yes. So what yes, is I it? A, uh, Go ahead. What was that? I was going to ask you, what is it like to perform in another country and they have, you know, like you just said, you know, different cultures, uh, you know, everything is so different. And I mean, that's Spain. So, you know, you, you can speak the language, but I'm sure you've been to other countries where you didn't even speak the language. So what is that yeah, it's like? It's kind of crazy. It's nuts because you go there and that's the thing. Music is a universal language. Yeah. And they know it. Yeah. You know, that's the only way that we're the same. But to go there and learn new cultures, like in Japan, we went and we did so many concerts out there that they know the lyrics to every song. That's got to be crazy. It's wild. It's so nutty. Because they'll come up to you and start talking to you, and I'm like, what? But then they'll start repeating the, the, the lyrics to the song, and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> and they know it clearly. It's crazy. But uh, that it's has to be, though. but I mean, like, you really, that has to fill your heart in, in such a way when these people can't even speak the language and they're singing your songs. It's overwhelming. It's, it's so warm. They're beautiful. It's, that's why I love what I do. I just, I live to go on a stage and perform and just get, you know, get accepted. 
Yeah. It, 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 I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know, what that would feel like. It, it's, you know, and, you know, they all are singing your song and you're playing a stadium. Like when you do a tour like that and you're in a stadium like that, how many people are, are, are there? Oh, I've done a, a, a tour that all the arenas, we've done stadiums as well. And they go anywhere from 80,000 to 90,000 people. That's insane. And, yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, to hear that roar of the of ninety thousand people, like it's like another kind of crazy. It's another kind of high crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a high. Anybody that that is a performer does not, you know, that type of a high that you get when you're in front of a stage and and people are there. It's like no other high you can ever get. It's a serious high. Yeah, that's an adrenaline that I live for. I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah, I I mean I I can I can't even imagine. I mean I I I, I am in awe of that when I see some pictures of you from the tour and you know, you're standing there and, and there's, you know, the view of the audience and it's just like going, 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 going. <laughs> and see your people. Yeah. And just to look out and see that must be so phenomenal. And they're like chanting your name, you know, I mean, if I'm telling you still to this day, I don't get it. Like what did I do? But, I so and I am so grateful and humbled that they still want to come out and see the show. So, and, and let me tell you again, because of you guys, because of the fans, man, people that follow us, because of they of the fans. We still got a stage to perform on, so thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I agree with that 110%, and it is a blessing uh, indeed. And and I always do say that, you know, without the fans, you have nobody to perform for. So, you know, it, yeah. it's definitely a humbling experience. And. Amen. Listen, you, I mean, I can't, like, thank you enough for, you know, coming on the show and, you know, being so candid with everyone and allowing them to get to know a little bit, you know, a lot, actually, about you. Um, and now I think you're going to have even a stronger fan base because, you know, whoever was listening today is definitely going to fall more in love with you than they already were. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you, Mommy. It was an honor to be on the show with you. I, and anything for my Carrie. I love you. <laughs> well, you know what? And and that we will continue this over uh, Café con Leche and Pasteles. And, and Pasteles. <laughs> okay. I, and you heard it here live on MiamiMikeRadio.com that I am going to learn how to make pasteles and Lisa is going to show me how to make them. And she yeah. promised me this, I don't know how long ago, and I'm going to hold you to it. You have to you got it, cancel the tour, Lisa. I have to make pasteles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cancel the tour the hell with everybody I need pasteles no um, we're, <laughs> we're gonna definitely do that you guys have heard it and, and it's, we're, we're committed to it but we yeah. I wish you a speedy recovery um, and I, I truly hope that you know I your your knee cooperates with you this weekend um, oh, thank you, Will. <laughs> yes, and I, I really do appreciate. Thank you for letting us get to know you. Thank you so much for your time and your graciousness and your hum, hum, your humble, gracious love, peace, and, and talent. Oh, thank you, Mama. You too, as well. Continue success. Why, and thank give you. a big hug to that baby boy for me, okay? I will. Thank you. I All love right, you, Mama. Mama. Love you too, sweetie. Take care of you. All right. Thank you. Uh, ciao, ciao. All right, there we go. I have, I am so humbled. Um, you know, what an amazing woman Lisa is. Um, I am definitely uh, blessed to have her in my life. You know, um, I know a lot of people um, from being in the industry most of my life. Um, and... You know, it's nice when people are still who they are 
uh, regardless of how many countries they've traveled and how much they have done. Um, you know, and, and it's very humbling to listen to someone like that who has triple platinum albums and she's humble about it and still was gave her time for us, you know, to do the show with me and for us so we could all get to know her because of the fact that she loves her fans. And I am very um, grateful for people like that because, like I said, she that's her. She's not all about the dollar. She's not all about cutthroat. She's none of that stuff. She is just straight up, let me do what I love and that's it. Like, like DJ Simply Nice says, peace, love, and music. And that truly is, you know, what it's all about. And, you know, I realize that, you know, this show is nowhere to that, you know, Lisa is a, a platinum, a triple platinum, you know, artist. But you know what, without anybody listening, without anybody to perform for, without anybody to talk to, without anybody to sing to, without anybody to play music for, you know what, it's an empty road. So we thank each and every one of you for helping us fill our soul so that we can in turn give back to you guys. So I want to say thank you to everybody that supported the show, um, that was here through the duration of it. I know sometimes the shows are a little bit long and sometimes we don't all have that much time, but I do really very much appreciate it. And I look forward to it, um, each and every week. So I want to thank you guys. Sharing is caring. Do me a favor. If you get the chance to the tune in app that you can listen to, Miami Mike Radio live on any show that we have. Um, and also, I am now on the TuneIn app. If you search Real Talk with Karen Stacy, my podcast is now on there so that you can listen. There's like, I don't know, almost 70 episodes at this point. So if you're ever bored while you're driving or whatever, you can listen to the TuneIn app in your car. If you do the Apple Play or the Google Play or whatever, you can actually listen while you're in the car too. So um, I thank you guys all for tuning in tonight. I want to rem I want to say thank you, number one, also to Steve, DJ Simply Nice, for starting us off with our freestyle freak hour um, dedicated to Miss Lisa. That was a lot of fun. And I love listening to the music while I'm getting ready for the show. It like amps me up, you know, so that I'm going. Because, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. My heart pounds a little bit or a lot of it before the show because you get a little bit nervous. It's a live show, you know. So, you know me, I kind of sometimes say the wrong thing. So I'm like, oh, crap, I hope I don't do that. But you know, at least for the right reason. But, um, you know, so I, I, it's nerve wracking and listening to the music, I'm like, yes, like I love it. And I get pumped up. So thank you, DJ Simply Nice. Steve, you are the best. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I want to remind you all that Miami Mike Radio has a lot of great shows, a lot of live shows. We have live shows almost every day. Mondays, we have um, the Tech House with DJ Luke. From 12 to 2, shout out to Luke, what a sweetheart. Um, I think this weekend, because I screwed it up last week, and I think this weekend he's with Tina DeMeo at uh, the Corner Pocket, so go check him out. And then we have uh, the ride home with um, DJ Pauly, um and, and Donna, who are recently engaged, and happy birthday, Donna, and congratulations. They're on from 6 to 9. Uh, we are awaiting Mind Candy Mondays and hoping that they are going to come. Uh, he's going to be back soon. Um, I just got word that DJ Simply Nice is going to jump on and play some more Lisa Lisa music. So I have a follow up. See, I love this. He's like my intro, my outro. I love it. Um, so let's see, where am I? Mind Candy Monday. Okay, Tuesday. So here we go. I'm back to Tuesdays. Tuesdays, we have DJ Simply Nice in the afternoon, lunchtime mix from one to three. 
And then, of course, your Real Talk with Karen Stacy from 8 to 10. And hopefully, I don't, I'm kind of getting used to this whole intro thing with DJ Simply Nice, so I might have to work something out there. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, Wednesdays, we have the Classics with Mike Malata from 5 to 7. Um, and then the Mayhem Loyal Listener Show is on at 8 p.m. with Hamilton Czar and May May. Big shout out to Am Hamilton Czar for getting through the snow and uh, making my night that much better on uh, Saturday night when I did my tribute to my brother. Thank you, Hamilton. You are the best. Thursdays, we have the Traffic Jam with uh, DJ Michael Anthony from 4 to 6. And then Fridays, we have a brand new show, Hypnotic Fridays, uh, with DJ Simply Nice. And I believe that's at 8. And then Saturdays, we have DJ Ghazi from 8 to 10. And then Sundays, we have the classic mix going on with DJ Mike Malata from at 12 o'clock. So make sure you guys tune in to Miami Mike Radio. Uh, again, you can listen on the TuneIn app. Um, obviously we have the Facebook live shows that, that you can share and you can see and listen to. And again, please follow me, um, on what is that? iTunes, I, I, everything. I'm on everything. Spotify, Podbean, uh, Google, um, what is that? Google play, uh, iTunes, Mix cloud, so just get on everything and hit like and follow and all that good stuff. All right, so I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am going to sign off of Miami Mike Radio, and DJ Simply Nice is gonna take it over, and we're gonna continue this little party for Miss Lisa Lisa. Thank you again, Lisa Lisa. You are really, uh, I have no words for what a beautiful soul she is, and I appreciate her time, and I appreciate your time. I love you guys. Signing off on MiamiMikeRadio.com. See you next week. Take it over, DJ Simply Nice.